Today we'll continue make prints from my Copenhagen trip in November 2021, made with the Hasselblad 6x6 camera on the Porter 400 film. Let's roll in cart in my bathroom with my darkroom and unplug the enlarger. Because today I'm printing 6x6, I don't need to change any settings. I'm using tetanol chemistry with the two solutions. I need to heat up chemistry to 35 degrees, so I'm using warm water. It's just quicker to start with the preheated solutions. And to maintain this temperature in time, I'm using circulator from CineSteel, and I set it up for 36 degrees to compensate for loss on the bottles and keep the temperature inside the bottles for 35 degrees and reheat the chemicals after I use it in the drum. Usually I store all my chemicals and all my tools in the same card in a dark room. So let's start with the choosing the negatives, which is next in a series. And today I probably have time to print two separate negatives. These negatives I developed myself, so I'm pretty sure they clean up dust and have a good exposure. For Hasselblad, actually this type of lighting conditions, it's pretty raw, so you're using 1 60th of the second and close to the open aperture. Let's load the first negative and inspect what we have. I have a film carrier with a 2 inch Newton glass and it's a universal one, so you can use it for 35 and 120 film. Let's blow off with the air some particles, which we can have on the carrier and on the film. Close it up and load it inside the photo head. And when you hear satisfying click, uh, it means the carrier is loaded properly. For navigation, I usually remove the filters and open aperture to maximum what I have f.56. And I'm starting with the turning on light and start navigation on the easel and put the frame in the center of the easel. From this view, you can estimate the density of your negative and what is the contrast of the negative itself. When the framing is done, let's start with the focusing. So I'm using a special tool from Butterson to focus on the grain. Inside the tool, we have a splitting prism, which end you see in the middle of this picture. And it should be sharp and the picture underneath, which you magnify, should also be sharp. So you're searching for the grain and when I finish with the focusing knob, my next step is a color analyzer. Let's turn it on on the cyan channel. I'm using 10 seconds on the exposure and we need to turn back our filters, close down aperture and diffuse our light. After finding the central position with the sensitive head, we dial in all the parameters on the photo head, switch off my tool, remove sensitive head and the last step what we need to do, transfer our 10 seconds to the Kaiser timer. I usually run it down once to check if it works correctly and trying to not forget to remove diffusion filter before you make a first test print. So let's make a first test exposure and develop it. Under safe light conditions, I load everything in a Yobo drum. And let's check if we have a stable temperature on my chemistry and starting with the color developer. And when it hits 35 degrees, we can start with the development. I start using gloves in the dark room just to protect my hands from a lot of water and a little bit from chemistry. I need to rotate color developer for 45 seconds. And when you put it back in the bottle, you need to use Flix Fix for 45 seconds and also rotate it. And because all of the chemicals is reusable, you can use it up to 40-45 developments in a tank from 500 milliliter solution. And this is our first test print directly from the calibrator. So let's quickly rinse it under the running water put it on the wall, run the squidgy on top and dry it with a hair dryer. For test prints I'm using bed paper with the light leaks on the side so I don't really care about the size of this paper. It's anyway waste so we can print bigger size and inspect it more closely. From the first look I have not enough exposure and the print a little bit cyan. So I will mount this print inside my lab book and put the initial settings and the date of print. And I think we will start with the correction of the color. For this I will use my test printer with the six open windows, which you can open and close. And when you set it up, uh, you need to, don't forget to close the filters and close the aperture. And when you make this test strip, you just use the rotation method again uh, with the same chemicals. And after several minutes, check the result what you have. 
I run test with the cyan channel on the 6th window with a step 5 and after a quick wash and drying session we can actually analyze which result we have and what is optimal settings what we will choose for next print. And because exposure and color can shift a little bit, it's better to analyze everything after a drying procedure. To make my life easier I put the settings with the cyan channel on top of this small frames which I exposed in the test printer. And from there you can say we only 10 points off, which you consider as a small correction. Let's put the settings on the head. And as a next adjustment I want to run the exposure on this portion because I have a blacks and whites there. Let's put first window in the same spot and run the exposure. With the safe light and everything loaded in the tank we can continue with the development. By using the same solution we're starting with the color developer and rotate it for 35 seconds again and after bleach fix we can check what result we have. Let's continue with a quick rinsing, mount it on a wall for drying, dry it with the hot air and let's write down the settings for time what I use for this test trip. Because I'm using my lab book as a storage it's much easier to go back and analyze which type of prints you make and what is your success. And let's make a final exposure with the 20 seconds, which is twice of time and with a correction for cyan channel and check all the results what we made with our test strips and the corrections. And here I already see my error. It was not really symmetrically loaded inside the easel, so it has a gap not even on the left side and on the right side. But anyway, let's mount it on the wall, run the squeegee on top. and dry it with a hair dryer. And on a dry print we can analyze all our corrections. The first error is a technical one, so this uneven part. Exposure actually looks good, and what I don't really like, and I will correct it from the final print, I will remove yellow and realign the easel to make the frame bigger. So for this one I need to increase my magnification and check the focus once again. And using the same chemistry again, so we will run the color developer for 35 seconds again and the bleach fix for 35 seconds once again. And as you already saw, it's a lot of different rotations. So let's check my final print. And even on the wet print we can already say, okay, we solved the problem with the edges and now it's even and in the middle of the paper. So let's put it on a wall, run the squidge on top, dry it with a hair dryer and let's analyze my final result with the print. I really like my color balance and actually my exposure looks good and my last guess correction for the yellow put the middle gray in the proper position and my column in the middle actually became the gray. And let's summarize our work on this print and for this one let's bring our lab book. First of all you see the change in yellow and if you compare everything to the initial print you see much more density so your exposure is actually correct. So I make a correction for cyan channel and get to the close enough picture and make last corrections with the exposure and after it make a small correction with the yellow channel and get this final picture. For future reprints I will put the settings which I used for final print inside my lab book. So you can quickly go back and analyze what you did before and which corrections lead to which color and you can also reprint the same print again and again and again. And to continue with the next print I just need to lift up the carrier to the special position and move the film to the next frame. Because this print was shot in the same time uh, you can expect almost the same color balance but I anyway will check it so let's pop up the filter back. So let's adjust the aperture and put the diffuser on. Let's turn on color analyzer on the cyan channel and repeat the calibration procedure. And again as the first step, let's put the sensor on top of the table and find maximum intensity on our diffused picture. And because today I work a little bit backwards and adjust exposure with the photo head with the color filters or with the diaphragm. And as the next step you're adjusting the different colors, yellow and magenta. And when the calibration is done, let's remove the sensor and let's take a look what settings we have. Because negative have a more density, so we have more cyan. And after repeating the development procedure, we can open Yobo tank and check my results. Let's quickly rinse Blix fix from our print. 
mount it on a wall and dry it quickly with a hair dryer. And again my initial settings close enough and this picture looks even better. We get a good exposure but unfortunately get a little bit of cyan shift. So let's try to fix it with the same procedure with the test printer and check if we need more corrections. And after 6 exposures I have a loaded drum and I want to proceed with the development. And after another round of development we have a test print and let's check if we need more corrections. When I wash out the flex fix from the print, you can clearly see the difference in color. So let's quickly dry it. And near each exposure, I write down all the parameters what I change on the photo head. And because I see the same yellow shift what I saw before in the previous print, I just add 10 points on the yellow filter, which after development of the final print should easily solve the problem with the yellow tint. So let's check final results and hope it doesn't have any defects from development. But so far, even the wet print looks really good, central in the position, and I have almost perfect color on the building. So let's mount it and quickly dry with a hair dryer. And check the final print what I have. It was actually end of the day and almost darkness, so it's beginning of the blue light. So I have enough exposure to handheld it and make a photo. I don't have a lot of colors because of the gloomy sky and actually overcast weather here. But anyway, I like my composition and the Christmas lights in the picture. And nevertheless, it was 1 60th of the second on an 80 mm lens. I still have a lot of sharpness because from the Hasselblad, you actually shoot it from the waist level. And let's analyze what I actually shipped here. So here I have a strange cast on the building and I thought it's actually cyan cast. So I changed the cyan channel and after it, I changed the yellow channel. But because I symmetrically changed two channels, it means I actually make a wrong decision and I just need to change magenta channel here. But anyway, I have a two prints, which I really like by color and the composition itself. And as I can say, I became more confident about the printing and I can dial in the sum settings by eye. So I don't need like a lot of test prints and I already can see much better the color shifts and in which direction they're moving. I just need a more experience with the darkroom and printing itself. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching.